In today's short and sweet summer episode, I'm going to be talking about three things you should keep in mind when you are working out in the summer heat. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Wellness Simplified Podcast. Simple wellness tips to help you improve your life without turning it upside down. With your host, award-winning fitness instructor, nutrition coach, and wellness expert, Susie Fevens. Welcome back to the podcast. If you missed last week's episode, we are keeping things short and sweet this summer with episodes that are under 10 minutes long so that you can listen, take action, and get on with your day. It also means that if you miss a month's worth at a time, you can catch up in under an hour because we're keeping the episode short. So today we're talking about exercising in the heat, which is something that we have to be a little bit more concerned with now that we are in the summer months here in Nova Scotia. Um, First of all, obviously, The number one thing you want to think about is a little thing called hydration. Water, very important. And a lot of people are a lot dehydrated all year round, but especially in the summer months. So number one, drink your water. Yes, we've got fancy formulas to help you figure out exactly how much water you need, but let's just keep it simple. And for the most part, go for about a liter and a half of water if you're not exercising, if you are exercising, go for at least two liters of water a day. Yes, that is just going to be a general rule. It is not, it is not perfect, but it's a good starting point and it's easy to remember and figure it out, especially if your water bottle is 750 milliliters, like a lot of tumblers are these days. That just means you have to fill it up twice if you're not exercising and fill it up at least three times if you are exercising. So that is tip number one. And that It's a bonus tip almost because it's relevant whether you're exercising or not. Number two, still on the hydration front. People get a little bit crazy about um, electrolytes and start downing all sorts of Powerades and Gatorades and coconut water and electrolyte replacement powder and all this stuff, which is important in the right time. But... If it is just your average summer day and you are not working out in the heat of the day and you are not working out for over an hour and you're not at a super excessive sweater, you probably don't need an electrolyte replacement. Plain old water is probably going to be just fine. If you are doing an endurance sport, if you are biking for well over an hour, if you're running for over an hour, if you're playing something like soccer or basketball, things where you're doing a lot of sweating, you're working for more than an hour, maybe not continually, but you know, you're on and off shifts. Those are going to be times where you're going to want to have more of an electrolyte replacement. Gatorade, Powerade can be great. I really like noon tablets. You can buy them at like, well, you can get them on Amazon, but you can get them at like sport check and you can just chuck them in and make your water a little bit fizzy. Vega also makes a really great electrolyte replacement powder. There's lots of them out there nowadays though, but you don't want to just add like crystal light, maybe the Mio sports replacement things. Although I really would urge you to go for the things that are made for athletic people like the (laughs) noon, like the Vega, because Mio is going to be full of a lot of extra junk. Um, If that's your only option, then fine, that's your only option. But you want to make sure that you are getting that sodium, you're getting that potassium. Coconut water, also a really great option. Superstore, President's Choice makes a great um, pineapple one that I like to use in smoothies in the summer. I will say this is a place where you're better off erring on the side of caution. So if you're wondering, oh, am I sweating enough that warrants electrolyte replacement, just have electrolyte replacement. And if you do use one of those powdered ones, the Noon or the Vega, and I'm sure there's lots of other ones out there, you're not getting a whole pile of extra sugar and junk, and it's really not going to impact your day a whole lot to have it, whether you need it. If you didn't need it, it's not going to make a big difference. If you did need it, it will make a big difference. And the thing I like about those is you can have a half of a serving. So if you're not sure, you can just have half a serving. But one last thing before we move on, if you feel your skin and you can feel like the salt on your skin and not because you've been at the ocean, that that's telling you, you need to replenish your electrolytes. And sometimes, you know what? A bag of salty pretzels or a bag of chips, a small bag of chips can can go a long way. You need that sodium in there. Um, So yeah, that is your next tip is electrolytes. If you're out there for a long time, you need some electrolytes. And you don't have to be exercising. You could be out gardening all day and need electrolyte replacement. 
This next one should go without saying, but you're going to try to avoid exercising during the hottest hours of the day. So basically the one to four is usually, or one to three, somewhere in there, that's the hottest part of the day. Sometimes we'll say 10 to four. Um, I find if you are in a shady area, the morning hours are usually not quite so bad, but you're gonna try to avoid exercising in those hottest hours of the day because you're gonna be a whole lot more likely to get heat exhaustion. You're also gonna get a lot more sun exposure and dehydration plus sunburn. Whew. You don't want that. So if all possible, if you have to work out during the hottest hours of the day, try to do something inside versus outside. Going for a run at 1.30 in the afternoon on a hot summer's day is a recipe for disaster, okay? Avoid the hottest hours of the day for exercise whenever possible. And then back on the electrolyte front, sort of, make sure that you are replenishing after your workouts. I already mentioned bananas, I think, but also dates, anything with a quick glucose uptake. That's why orange slices are often pretty popular as well. Something like that after you work out, you wanna replenish the, the um, glucose, get some simple carbs in there pretty quickly, um, and then have a really decent meal with a good shot of protein, a good amount of fat, and a decent amount of carbohydrates within a couple hours of a hard act a hard workout, a hard exercise, right, Suzanne? So yes, make sure you're hydrated. If you're not working out, aim for at least a liter and a half of water a day. If you are working out at least two, hour, two hours, two liters, I am having trouble with my words today. Secondly, electrolytes. If you are working out hard for over an hour, probably gonna need some electrolytes. If you're not sure, have some anyway. You're better to have a little bit too much than none. Make sure that you're not working out during the hottest hours of the day, if at all possible, because heat exhaustion and heat stroke are real things, my friends, and you don't want either one. And finally, make sure that you're replenishing after a workout, especially in the summer months when there's excess sweat. You're off often expelling more energy than you are during the cooler months. Carbs, some simple carbs like fruit, uptakes quickly after your workout but you also wanna make sure that you're getting protein and fat in there. So a nice, like a peanut butter sandwich would be a good start with a glass of milk. I don't know, maybe that doesn't float your boat, but that would cover all of the bases. Anyway, that's it for today's episode. Short and sweet for summer, coming in under eight minutes today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you next week.